Be shocked. Despite all the talk of we're all in it together, I put it to you that you are progressively abandoning uh, many of the workers and sectors that have been most harshly hit by the public health measures that you have put in place. Uh, the PUP payment is by definition a payment given to people who have lost employment because of measures that the government has taken. Uh, they have done nothing wrong, yet they are being victimised with across the board cuts to their income. And in the same week now, uh, the, uh, the uh, halt on uh, mortgage repayments uh, that they had is being lifted so that they could face further harassment uh, from the banks at a time when the situation for their employment uh, is deteriorating because of renewed uh, restrictions. Uh, you have failed, uh, despite repeated calls uh, that I have made for months on behalf of taxi drivers to respond to their requests uh, for assistance uh, when their industry has been absolutely decimated and is being decimated again. They are going to be taking uh, to their cars for a protest on the 9th out of desperation uh, because of the situation uh, that they are in uh, and we've had no commitments or assurances. The arts, music and entertainment sector uh, were 3.5 billion with 35,000 uh, people whose livelihoods have been decimated, no clear commitments or assurances, financial supports uh, to actually sustain them through this period. The Debenhams workers, uh, whose, whose employer used COVID-19 as a cynical excuse to execute a tactical liquidation, who've now been on the picket lines for more than 170 days, uh, you've completely abandoned them. Completely abandoned them. Um, uh, it's absolutely outrageous, uh, Taoiseach. So I put it to you uh, that you need to get in and support these people. Money is being handed out hand over fist to sections of big business in this country who haven't lost anything close to the amount of income that these sectors have lost uh, and uh, you have no problem giving the money to them. But the arts people, the music people, the taxi drivers, the Debenhams workers, just abandoned. Uh, so I ask you, uh, Taoiseach, and more importantly, they ask you uh, to do something for them because they are in trouble through no fault of their own. Thank you, Deputy Taoiseach. Yeah, well, first of all, um, you know, I think we haven't been giving hand money over fist to big business. The funding has been very directed um, through wage subsidy schemes, uh, through the pandemic, uh, over 3.5 billion alone on the pandemic has been paid. Uh, 350,000 workers are underpinned by the wage subsidy scheme and will be. By any standard, that is an extraordinary intervention because COVID-19 is an extraordinary event. It's just, it's necessary because COVID-19 has impacted on the very sectors that you've talked about. COVID-19 has made congregation almost impossible. It's made supporters turning up at matches impossible in the numbers that we were used to. It's made the hospitality sector uh, situation very, very challenging. It's not government, it's COVID. Government has to respond to that and has responded to that through a suite of measures. Um, right across the board, from restart grants to human capital initiatives uh, involving over 200,000 placements and, and apprenticeships and so on, different uh, schemes through skill nets and so on, uh, a 200 million initiative. Uh, and likewise, in terms of restart grants, um, loan facilities have been made available, but companies are not that, you know, the, the general feedback, understandably, is that SMEs don't want to pile debt upon debt. Um, and the, the multinational sector, which you rail against consistently, isn't getting uh, huge supports, but is, is doing well, particularly in the life sciences, and is helping to underpin the economy. Because guess what? A lot of SMEs, Irish-owned companies, depend a lot on multinational companies. Um, the multinationals themselves employ about 250,000, um, but for every job they provide, they create extra in the SME sector. You're, so you're looking at about 450,000, all told. Um, so that, but it's the domestic sector Yes, the self-employed, the taxi drivers, and a range of others. And I accept the, the point in terms of Epic. I will engage with Epic, and we will engage with the uh, events industry. But again, it's an industry that has been 
very badly impacted by COVID-19 because it, it doesn't lend itself. Uh, COVID doesn't facilitate the type of economic activity that that sector um, de develops, provides, uh, and has provided excellently um, over the years. Uh, and so we, we will continue in terms of the forthcoming budget to look at ways that we can assist sectors over and above what has been done um, already. Uh, because I, we, 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 we recognize um, and acknowledge um, the impact of COVID on those sectors um, specifically. And we've been consistent on that. And in terms of localized severe restrictions being brought into Dublin, prior to that, uh, Lee Shoffley and Kildare, we did bring in additional measures to help those sectors. Uh, and we will again be looking at other measures uh, that we can, we, we can bring in to try and help those sectors um, specifically. Uh, and in terms of the, um, the, the abandoning of uh, you, you know, the job seekers and so on, like that, there are challenges in, in social protection. We have 213,000 people on job seekers allowance. We have carers. There's a motion before the house in terms of child poverty. Um, you know, we have to do take measures and prioritize those areas as well, outside of the extraordinary interventions that we've made um, in relation uh, to the economy um, and, 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 and to employment. Uh, and I think that has to be acknowledged as well. And that will require some budgetary action um, also um, uh, in, 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 in terms of measures designed to help people who are really feeling the brunt uh, as a result of the economic um, downturn occasioned by uh, the COVID-19 um, impact. And we are looking specifically to see if we can help particular sectors who because they either don't have a rate valuation or who haven't been in a position to avail of the existing schemes, can we create bespoke approaches and schemes um, to help them? That has been looked at in a budgetary context to see with social protection can we help people um, in, in, in that situation uh, and, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, to do that. In, in relation to the, the, the Deputy McDonald raised in terms of the issue to do with the leaving certificate and the calculated grades, um, my understanding is that the, the department would have been alerted to this by um, the uh, company Polymetrica who, who discovered the error in the code initially. They informed the department about it. The department, they've since been correcting the piece of code. It's now operating as intended. Uh, the Department of Education and Skills found a second error uh, while performing checks related to rectifying um, the first error. And the department are very anxious that they would get, uh, if, if you like, all of the issues uh, resolved um, and, and, and to understand fully what was involved here um, before going uh, public on it uh, to make sure that it can be comprehensive in its presentation uh, to students um, and to all involved. Uh, and all students registered with the Calculated Grades student portal will, will receive communication uh, from the department. Um, but I would, you know, the Minister obviously will be making a more comprehensive statement on that later today. And again, I think it is important that it is comprehensive and that it communicates directly um, to the, the, the students um, more directly. Uh, and finally, no, sorry, I might not, sorry, and I would also, if I could, sorry, I said last week, I said last week, I said, yeah, I don't have the specific day, yeah, yeah, okay. And there was a, when, when they were initially alerted, obviously then they had to go through and find out what was involved and what were the details um, and so on in terms of the issues arising um, out of this. Could I say overall in terms of the economic plan, the subject matter of this question, um, we also want to invest and think post-COVID, where is the economy going, where is society going? And if you look at the SRI report today, it is talking about, for example, potentially in the regions, a better balance around housing supply and around the economic activity, investment in broadband, uh, in the climate change agenda through retrofitting, uh, energy efficiency, uh, and that area, plus the digitalization um, agenda, uh, which is particularly important given the lessons we've learned from COVID and its capacity to bring greater jobs to the regions um, and to rural Ireland um, in particular. Uh, and that's something I think in terms of the budget will happen, the economic plan will follow that, um, and that will try and give a more medium term framework around where we're heading as a society post COVID and economically where we're heading and where we should invest more uh, to accelerate new areas of economic development. Thank you, Tisha. We need to move to question four now, and, please. And, and, and construction. Question.